So the office case list is the next section. And the office case list is my favorite section because I can really help a candidate create their office case list and really pull topics that they may be very uncomfortable with and put them on their office case list. And a lot of candidates say, you know, Diane, I really don't want to put this on there because I don't like amenorrhea or I don't like uterine anomalies. But it's actually important to put examples of things that are make you uncomfortable because it's going to force you to learn. And this is how I talk about using your case list as a study tool. The categories on office are very important. They, there's multiple preventative health, office procedures, diagnosis-based categories like breast disease, lifestyle counseling, and office surgery. And then the columns are important as well. The problem needs to be there. The diagnostic procedure, the treatment, results, and visits. And on the next slide, we're going to have some ideas of how we can match the column with the problem. The first step, just like the last slide, plan the format. So when you have a column and say you're seeing someone with a breast mass, yes, they could have come in for their well visit exam, but you put them in the category of breast problem. You don't need to write all the lipid counseling, the abnormal lipid test, and everything else that you did during the wellness exam. You need to focus on the breast problem, and you can extract that information and put it in that category. So the first steps is really to plan the format. Organize the patient into categories. For example, on the new ABOG software, abnormal cytology is first. So you might have someone with postmenopausal bleeding, but they also have an abnormal pap smear. You want to see which category is that person going to be the best fit for you, meaning this would be a great person to compare and contrast with, say, a high-grade pap or a low-grade pap to someone who is in their 20s. So if you have a 62-year-old with a low-grade pap and you have a 22-year-old with a low-grade pap, that's an excellent way to use the case list to study because the ways that you manage a low-grade pap at those different ages differ. So let me ask about a specific example. For instance, you look through your office patients for the uh, past year and you notice you can easily find you know, 30 uh, patients with um, abnormal cytology. Um, but you remember one case where an agus pap, for instance, led to the diagnosis of an early stage endometrial carcinoma. The planning the organization of your patients and placing them into the best categories should logically mean you would put that patient with the agus pap who had an endometrial carcinoma after the workup into the um, the uh, cancer and or malignancy um, column. Uh, All right, so let's go back to, to that. So if we look at the first steps to plan the format, we want to organize patients into categories. The first category is abnormal cytology, which is the first category we would place. And we want to place the patient in the best category. If we had a patient that was 59 years old with an atypical glandular cells that favored carcinoma or favored malignancy, we could possibly put her in the abnormal cytology section or we could put her in perimenopausal and menopausal care for example the category that this patient would be more suited to would actually be the abnormal cytology category and that would be an example of where to place the patient in the best category well what about if you had 10 good abnormal cytology cases, um, but you didn't have many or any um, perimenopausal care uh, patients, would it be best then to pull her into the other categories so you meet all the uh, requirements for um, categories listed? 
It could be, but I would find that very unique that you would not have seen a perimenopausal female at oh, twelve months. <laughs> sure, good, <laughs> good point. Uh, unless you're, unless you're a fellow in adolescent gynecology. Yeah, that's a good point. That is a good point, and you might not see very perimenopausal females. But that's the other reason why the board gives you forty different categories to use. The second step is to summarize each patient and to really simplify the diagnosis. And whenever someone starts a case list, everyone says, how much information should I put in there? The, you don't want to put so much information that you have a 35-page office case list. That's just too much information. So you want to simplify the diagnosis and you want to ensure that the diagnostic procedures match the listed problem. For example, if you had postmenopausal bleeding on there, you would want to make sure that you have an endometrial biopsy. And also the treatment you want to limit to outpatient modes of treatment. So on the office case list, I'm not going to write hysterectomy, BSO, because that patient really should go on my gyne case list. I'm hoping people aren't doing hysterectomies in the office. Hmm. Uh, so, And you also want to summarize the results according to the established care guidelines. Okay. The one great... A case example would be someone who has abnormal uterine bleeding and who is less than the age of 45. If you did an endometrial biopsy on this patient, it would be important to establish why you fell outside the norms. Perhaps in the problem, you can say abnormal uterine bleeding, family history of endometrial cancer, and the examiner. Obesity. Exactly. PCOS would be another one, or even if you failed medical management, that might be another reason. Um, or if you had an atypical glandular pap, uh, might be a reason as well. Summarizing the results according to the established guidelines is important. And then the third steps, like before, is to think like an examiner. Looking at this case, have I demonstrated the standard of care? What further questions does each case raise? And we're going to go into that in a little bit. So here is an office case list. And here is uh, abnormal cytology, colposcopy, and CIN. And as you can see, this is great because you have a high-grade cervical cytology and um, you have an ASCIS high-risk positive and you have two different uh, treatment expectations on here. The first one is expected management and the second one would be a LEAP. And so if we look, um, what I've added for this is actually for the first case is to let them know that I'm going to do serial pap surveillance. And the second case here, I really, it would help me to know if this was a high grade pap. Now, one thing that we need to establish is that you have to get approved ABOG guidelines when and abbreviations when you're doing the case list and that's going to be important. Okay. Um, a lot of people will say, why can't I, why should I just write PAP in one year? You can, or you can write serial PAP surveillance and uh, let the examiner ask you that. The second thing we can see here in case three, it says right ovarian cyst, and you can see on diagnostic procedures how it says 3.5 centimeter cyst. Um, one thing I like to do in the problem is actually to say how big the cyst was. It makes it a little easier, I think, for the examiner to really see that. And then on the treatment, I added in counseling on endometriosis, medical and surgical management. Because with this person, it's really going to depend on if you're going to do surgical or medical management, depending on her fertility desires. And also... Anytime you have an endometrioma of a certain size, uh, sometimes medical management is, is inferior to surgical management for um, patients who uh, desire fertility. Okay, and then similarly here for case four. Okay. 
for case um, five, I like this case uh, because you have someone with a unilateral breast mass and then dimpling. Um, and then one thing here is um, on case six, I might add in what the mammogram BIRADS would have been for case five or six. So I would have added what the BIRADS category would be. Okay. So with breast disease, I would make sure that if you're going to order a mammogram, I usually write in the BIRADS category. So um, I think that's important. So I'll just write a BR here. Um, and I would put that in for that. 